let's talk about some methods of editing structure. It is possible to add on to a grid if you need to edit a, an existing grid. If you select it and do a right click and do edit structure, you're going to see that you have your axis values here as well as your row value and your platform value. Let's just say that we wanted to add another level atop this. Well, we can just go ahead and put another one at 60 feet and perhaps we needed to add another row to this then we could go ahead with that and we're going in 20 foot increments so we'll keep that going as well and then we were going in 20 foot increments here so we'll go ahead and put this at 100 feet so we'll probably need another name for this so we'll go ahead and we will do an x6 for that one and we will add this one and make it y5 and we'll have a level five to this one. We'll go ahead and give that the OK. And now you'll see that we have a much larger structure here ready to go. Now, one thing that we do need to point out about editing this structural member or editing the grid is that the grid and the structural members are not directly linked. The grid is simply an AutoCAD 3D line drawing, which is used as a guide for setting up the members. You could use any 3D lines or 2D lines, for a matter of fact, and use that too, because the members can pull out by themselves. You don't actually need the grid to do that. You could just simply select your member tool and drag one out and do it that way. But we're using this only as a guide. So if you make an edit to the guide, the, two, uh, the member is not necessarily going to follow. Let me go ahead and uh, take that one out right there. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. We'll go ahead and we will start a member here. And we will go up to our top level here. And we'll snap it here and there. And we'll hit enter. Now. If we edit this, and we'll go ahead and edit the structure, and we'll go ahead and we'll edit this value of a Y6. If we go ahead in here and we edit these, if we, um, let me go ahead and remember we had, we went to X6 on this side, we went to Y5 on this side. So we're going to go ahead and move it out just a little bit. So if we edit this here, and we find where our Y5 is. It's at 130. Let's go ahead and change that to 150. Whenever we do that, you'll see that this whole section moved, but this one did not. So you need to go back and be able to adjust those to the structural grid. Now, in this case, if you have a situation like this, it's fairly easy because your 3D model here does have the 3D model of the member does have a grip here, which can be extended. And if you have your endpoint setting turned on or your snap point, if you grab that right there and just bring it over here until you snap to that endpoint over there, it will snap exactly in place exactly like you want it. There are other methods in editing structural members. Let's take a look at one now. I'm going to go ahead and draw a member on my uh, existing grid. I'll just grab this point right here and I'll just follow along there and I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put this in 50 feet, tab over, and I've got this running 50 feet. Now, what I can do is, if I want to lengthen this, of course, I can go to this grip right here, grab it, and I can drag it out at any length I want. But I can also do a lengthen member. And a lengthen member gives me two options here. I can get a total length for it, or I can get a delta. If I do a delta, I can put in how many more feet that I want to add to it. I'm going to go ahead and type in 10 feet, and then it says select the member that I want to do this to. And as soon as I click on it, you'll see that it's 10 feet longer. Now, let's say that I want to try the total method here. And I'm going to go ahead and do length and member. And I want to do a total length on it. Let's say I want this one to be 100 feet. And then all I have to do is click on the member that I do want to change this to. And now you'll see that this one is 100 feet. 
we also have a method of extending existing members. Let's go ahead up to our cutting panel, which is in our structure tab. And let's find this tool right here that says extend. Now, if you want to type it in, it's plant steel extend. And what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to use three points. I'm going to identify a plane of three points to extend to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pick one, two, and three. Now you'll see that I can select the steel member that I want to extend to that plane. And when I cl uh, click on it, it's going to bring me exactly to that plane over here. And of course, if that's a mistake and it doesn't come out like I want, I can always use the undo function and bring it right back. Another function that we can do with members is we can actually trim back on steel. Let's take a look how we'll do that. Let's go ahead and zoom in on this uh, steel member right here. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to trim it back one bay. So I'm going to go ahead to my trim tool, which I'm going to find in my cutting panel of my structure tab. And I'm going to use this three point method here. I'm going to OK that. And the three points I'm going to do are the three points within this bay or grid that I have right here. Once I pick my three points, you're going to notice it's going to uh, prompt you to select the structural member that you want to trim. And I'll just go ahead and give that a click. And you'll notice it's been trimmed back exactly to the plane that we identified. Other options for structural editing in AutoCAD Plan 3D includes uh, some things such as cutback member. And uh, we have a 45 degree miter. We can also restore members that have been previously cut as well. Let's take a look at a couple of those. If we want to cut back a member, is whenever you just lay in... Um, when you lay in beams or you lay in members, they're not going to be finished on the end. So it's kind of up to you how you're going to do that. So if I do cutback member here, it's going to ask me to do a limiting member. In other words, which member do I want to cut back to? So I'll go ahead and I will select the one that I'm going to cut back to. And this is actually going to be the steel that I'm going to cut. When I click on that, you'll see that that has been trimmed. Let's go ahead and take a look at that from above just so we can see exactly how that did. And you quite nicely, it's been limited. This one has been cut back to the limit of that one. Now, if I don't care for that so much, I can use my restore tool and that brings back the members. All we had to do was activate it and click it on. Let's go ahead and cancel out of that. And let's give this uh, miter cut a try. We'll go ahead and we're going to pick the uh, the two that we want, and you'll now see that you have a nice miter there. Now, of course, if you wanted to edit out a gap, you could also specify a gap that you want in there for whatever purposes that you might have. We can go ahead and restore those back to the way that they were as well. All right, one more little operation we can use when editing our steel, and that's going to be this one right here. Where if you typed in plant steel edge cut, or we did what's called a cutback edge member. Let's go ahead and find that little tool right there. Cut member edges, plant steel edge cut, whichever one you want to do. So whenever the end point of this is lying on the body of another member, as I have these two pieces of steel lying onto another piece going perpendicular, this command is going to cut those two pieces back to the uh to the distance that we specify. So if we go ahead and start this, let's go ahead and say we want to cut that back 24 inches. Now it's going to ask us to pick the steel that we want to cut back. We can go ahead and pick these two peeps, uh, pieces right here. And whenever we give a right click to approve of that, you're going to see that they're both cut back. So that's just one more that you can use when editing your structural steel members.